Hi again then guys and welcome to a review which I am very happy to be doing and it's a returning face, one which I did not expect to see coming back to Gran Turismo at all necessarily, let alone in GT Sport because of licensing issues and because of Kaz himself putting us off the idea, saying that it was very unlikely, if not definitely not going to happen. TVR. TVR is back in the game and again, as I said in my overarching review for this update, it's been a great couple of months for me. One of my favourite tracks was brought back in the form of Route X, and also three of my favourite brands, Pagani, Maserati and TVR, all making their triumphant return to the franchise. In the case of this TVR though, just like with Maserati, more so than Pagani, it's got a lot of usability, because TVRs typically are not hugely powerful. They tend to fall within the three to 400 horsepower region, but that's one of the reasons why they're so good. TVRs have this reputation of being incredibly difficult to drive, they'll kill you at the slightest chance, and although in the real world that could certainly be true, in a game I don't agree with that fundamentally, be it something like the V8S all the way up to a speed 12, TVRs are as good as you make them, and as good as you drive them. TVRs are the spirit of 60s Grand Prix and old school GT Le Mans cars, but in modern times, in as much as they are only as good as their driver. So if your TVR doesn't handle well, that's your fault, not the car. The TVR as a brand, TVRs as individual models, be it a Chimera, a Cerbera, a Tamora, a Tuscan, whatever, they all have amazing ability. Now this one, the Tuscan, is not quite a squat, or something like a Chimera or a Cerbera, so the body roll is a little bit more evident than them. Plus it's also more tail happy. Typically speaking, people know the Tuscan as being a slippery car, but when you fettle it properly, tune it properly, use it properly, it's fast, real fast. Now it's not quite expensive enough to use as a cash cow on Blue Moon Bay, which is unfortunate because it has a ton of ability there, but at 94,000, it's pretty close. <laughs> and for use in the end classes, it's definitely one of those cars which could give something like a Porsche GT3 a run for its money. Now it does not have the raw cornering ability of the Porsche, and let's be honest, if it did, that would be kind of ridiculous, considering how much effort's put into each new Porsche GT3, how much newer that car is, and how much tech there is in the car for that exact reason, whereas a TVR is about as old school as you can get from a modern vehicle. It's actually a wonder that they could still even be made. They're so primitive in comparison to many others. There's next to no tech. It's just you, an engine, and I believe a fiberglass body. And speaking of the lightweight components and lack of components in the TVR, that's one of the reasons why it's so good. It's light. Most TVRs are very, very lightweight. In fact, it's rare to ever see a TVR that's more than 1,200 kilos. These days, even supercars weigh 15, 1,600 kilos, so to be 1,100, 1,200, it's one of the reasons why they're so quick, especially for their power. Now, the Tuscan, in particular, weighs 1,100 on the dot, and with 360 horsepower from that 4-litre engine, which I believe is a straight six, if I recall correctly, has 327 horsepower per tonne. That's very healthy. For a car that has under 400 horsepower to begin with, to have that is good. Now the torque is pretty good as well, not as high as the power, but 308 pound feet. It's good enough, especially when you haven't got that much weight to be lugging around. And in terms of driving ability, well, as I said, it's down to you. It demands respect and it demands finesse. You should not jump into a TVR and expect to win the first race easily. You shouldn't even expect to be able to put in a good lap easily the first time. You need to learn how to use the car, especially if you're new to driving TVRs. Maybe GT Sport was your first game in the franchise, for instance. Whereas for many of us, we've been driving TVRs the whole time. They're one of the longest running brands in Gran Turismo, so they've always been worthy of that reputation of being really good, but also challenging. In a similar way to something like a Cobra or a Stratos or a number of others as well. Now, in the case of the Tuscan, Interesting choice to be the first one to bring back. It was a premium, so it makes sense. I personally hope that we see more. Whether or not that we will, well, that's another thing entirely. And the biggest downside that I definitely need to mention in this review is more of an aesthetic one rather than performance-based, and it's a disappointing one. And that is the windscreen. What am I talking about? Well, going to cockpit view on pretty much any track at pretty much any kind of day, there's a massive amount of glare. 
you can see the dashboard in the windshield all the time. Now maybe that's just because I chose the tan interior, maybe the black interior is better, but I noticed driving it on all of the tracks that I had it on, there is a huge amount of reflection on the windshield at all times, and it's very off-putting. Now maybe that's just me, I'm sure it won't bother other people, but it's something that does need to be bore in mind because it's annoying, <laughs> and many cars don't have anywhere near as much glare that this one does. Now maybe that's what they're like in real life, maybe that's why they actually have the bad reputation, it's not that the car is bad, people just can't see where they're going, but for whatever reasons, that is an issue in the game. In terms of ability, of course it's great. You put TVRs in drag races against cars with similar amounts of power and they consistently win, even against stuff like Porsche 911s, uh, Aston Martin Vantages, pretty much anything else of the time, even up to and including Catrums. I believe Top Gear, or at least Clarkson in one of his videos, actually did that kind of drag race shootout in the late 90s, and the Sobra destroyed everything. And it wasn't even the Speed 12, it was just the Speed 6. They are fantastic for their power, they can easily outpull cars with two or three hundred horsepower more, and online, I've already used this around Route X, fully tuned, it's got less than 600 horsepower, so it's in N600, but it's running 240 miles per hour. That's a ton of ability. And of course, not just on Route X, you could use that on Le Mans, you could use its handling on various other tracks. It's fast, it's nimble, it's lightweight, and although it's nowhere near as beginner-friendly as something like a Porsche, which is a very strange comparison to make given that Porsches aren't exactly known for that either, it's a rewarding one. In hatchback terms, for instance, the TVR Tuscan is like the Renault Clio V6 of this sports car world. The Clio V6 is not the easiest of hot hatches to drive, but it's one of the most rewarding. It's very fast and very good, but the layout of the car being mid-engine rear-wheel drive, very wide and very squat, makes it challenging. Likewise with TVR, it looks similar to something like a C5 Corvette or a Porsche 911 or a Panos Esperante. But it's not. It's much more primitive, much more old school, and does not help you. It's all down to you, it's, about to the, it's down to the respect that you give to the car, down to the effort that you put in, the practice that you get, and at the end of the day just focusing on yourself driving the car rather than those around you. So in a race full of TVRs, it'll be an interesting test of skill. In a race with other cars on the grid, apart from TVRs, you've definitely got advantages going in. It's a great car, you just got to use it properly. But that's it overall for this review. Of course, I will see you next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.